Welcome to worship at Anchorage Presbyterian Church. We are glad that you decided to join us this Advent season. This week, we turn to Luke's writing, which is an account in two acts, the gospel biography of Jesus, and then the story of the early church, the Jesus community. Whether you were a Jew or Gentile in those days, deciding to become part of this illegal early Christian movement could bring punishment for your allegiance. Surely the message in both Luke and Isaiah that the downcast, lonely, and oppressed would rise up is a welcome and inspirational account. Like the Jewish exiled people of Isaiah's time, and like the early Christians, we also sometimes wonder where God is in our suffering. We long to hear the promise that the reason for joyful praise is that good news is on the way. Let us now worship God together in this online community of faith. We thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of the depths of joy. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we are not sure of your presence, ignite the flame of joy within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us face the silence of unknowing and embrace it as the pregnant pause before joyful new beginnings. Amen. You are invited to light your Advent 3 candle of joy at this time.
In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps even when our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it is important to act to call out, name, and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out, name, and claim our belief in the promise of joy. Let us pray. God with us, even in Advent, we confess that you seem far away. You are hidden when we need you near. In our hurt, doubt, and fear, we do not try to draw closer to you. Instead, we lash out against you, our neighbor, and even those we love. Forgive us, we pray, and come to save us. Let your face shine until our tears are dried, our sins are faded, and our hope is restored. After all, we belong to you, and in your hands we can be made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ was raised for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Sisters and brothers, with one to says Christ is our advocate, we can boldly declare the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves has fulfilled the law. The commandments are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Let us now share signs of peace with one another. We invite you to share the peace of Christ in our YouTube chat or by texting or emailing a friend. May the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you for singing by signing with me today. We have been learning the words and singing and learning the sign language for this little light of mine. And uh, we've learned verse, verses one and two, and today we're gonna learn verse three. We need to remember that when we use music to uplift others and, and shine our light in the world, it helps uplift people who are sad and tired, especially in these times of isolation. So thank you again for learning to sign um, this wonderful song, This Little Light of Mine. So let's go back and review the first verse, remember? It sounds, it goes like this, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And then verse two goes like this. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan, blow it out. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And for our third verse today, we're going to take our light. I'm going to say, hide it under a bushel, hide it under. And then we're going to make the sign for a plant, a bushel. So you just come right up to your hands. Hide it under a bushel, and then take these two fingers and say no. So hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let's sing it. Let's sing it from the beginning. I'll try it slowly so we can uh, all work together. Okay? 
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, thank you, boys and girls. I feel more joy in the world already. Spreading this music and spreading your light with music makes people feel much better. And I thank you for spreading your joy. Uh, let's pray. Please repeat after me. Thank you, God, for giving us light and for giving us music. Help our hands dance and our hearts sing to spread more joy in the world. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 57 verses 14 to 19. It shall be said, Build up, build up, prepare the way. Remove every obstruction from my people's way. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. For I will not continually accuse nor will I always be angry. For then the spirits would grow faint before me, even the souls that I have made. Because of their wicked covetousness, I was angry. I struck them, I hid and was angry. But they kept turning back to their own ways. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will lead them and repay them with comfort creating for their mourners the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to the far and the near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each week, we are presenting a musical piece that the choir worked on this fall in preparation to fill our worship with music and our dark nights with the light of joy. What a gift this has been when we were afraid we would have no music this Advent. We've also been witnessing the power of music through documentaries that open us to lives transformed by the presence of instrument and song. This week, Anchorage Presbyterian and Beulah Presbyterian will co-host discussions of another amazing documentary film that tells the story of one piece of music whose composer, Beethoven, could not have imagined how it would ring out around the world as a testament to undying spirit of the people, an ode to joy. Following the ninth, tells the story of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, 
created when the aging and deaf Beethoven himself could not hear it at all. His silence was transformed into echoes through the ages as this music was used in protest marches against evil dictators and as hope in the midst of natural disaster. We are excited about sharing this film with you. Information about this film and small group discussions can be found on our website. For this moment, we present to you a rallying call, much like Mary's Magnificat, which we will hear in our gospel reading today. She lifts her voice and says that God will show mercy and lift up the lowly. This simple song overlays the idea that we must resist injustices of the world and, at the same time, pray for our enemies, welcome the stranger, and show love to our neighbors. Luke, the gospel writer, goes to great lengths to provide details and a clear timeline for what happens prior to and after the birth of Jesus. It's important for all, Jews and Gentiles alike, to truly understand who Jesus is and the circumstances surrounding how he came to be born into our world. Early in the book, The Annunciation, Mary's encounter with the angel Gabriel and her subsequent response has captured the imagination of artists and musicians for centuries. Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and 26 through 56. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, 
and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of your ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is a sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and set the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Every year about this time, happiness goes on sale. In the commercials on TV, in the glossy catalogs in the mail, and in the home and family magazines, you can find it. Children in their favorite matching Christmas PJs. Happy husbands opening the gift of the power tool they've always wanted. Happy housewives with their cozy blankets, sipping hot cocoa. It's what happiness is supposed to look like, right? But against the raging storms of life, that kind of happiness you can put on a credit card is simply wrapping paper to the world's sorrow. This fleeting emotion quickly vanishes when the storms of life come. Joy, on the other hand, is an inner attitude, a sense of internal well-being, which can be sustained in the midst of all circumstances. Joy does not come from social status or wealth or power, but from fulfilling our callings as children of God, giving our lives meaning and purpose. Someone once said, the difference between happiness and joy is that happiness comes from happenings and joy comes from Jesus. For Mary and Elizabeth, they must have instinctively known this truth about joy. They had to both know that they had a rough road ahead, one very old, and one very young. Yet these remarkable women had a deep faith and trust in God that they used to inspire their sons with the angel's vision for a just and joyful future for the world. Elizabeth and Zechariah had been wanting a child for so long. Month after month, they experienced a disappointment, sadness, and embarrassment. They prayed and prayed. When the angel Gabriel tells Zechariah that his wife will give birth to a son, Gabriel adds, 
you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Rejoice, Elizabeth and Zechariah do, because they would finally have the child they dreamed of. They also rejoiced in the great things that God was doing, set in motion by both John and Jesus' births. When Mary comes to visit her relative, carrying Jesus in her womb, John rejoices in utero, as Elizabeth tells Mary, For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. While Mary is there visiting Elizabeth, she burst into a joyful canticle we know as the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, Mary says, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Mary wonders and ponders, questions and considers, and would have naturally been a bit afraid, but she knows that God has done great things for both her and even more so understands the benefit this child will bring to the whole world. She then, in the words of professor and theologian Caroline Lewis, testified to the God she'd always known, the God who shows mercy to those who fear God, who scatters the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, who brings down the powerful from their thrones and lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things and sends the rich away empty, who remembers Abraham and all of his descendants, which now include her forever. And now, more than ever, Mary knows who her God is. She knows what God has done for her, for her cousin Elizabeth, for the outcast, the overlooked, those discarded, disenfranchised, dismissed. Joy can happen in the midst of oppression when those who are considered lowly are inspired to speak up and to proclaim their worth. Over the years, Beethoven's Ode to Joy has played an important role all over the world in the midst of oppression and tragedy. Intertwined with movements for justice and freedom, and it has been an inspiration to many. Female demonstrators under the Pinochet dictatorship sang the piece outside the torture prisons, which gave hope to those men inside. Chinese students broadcasted at Tiananmen Square. When the Berlin Wall came down in December of 1989, it collapsed to the sound of Beethoven's Ninth conducted by Leonard Bernstein on Christmas Day. In Japan, every December, it is performed hundreds of times over with 10,000 people in the chorus and played an important role in the healing of the aftermath of the tsunami of 2011. Composed in 1824, Ode to Joy is the final movement of Beethoven's last symphony, number no. nine. Written toward the end of his life, when he was completely deaf and very sick, one might assume Beethoven had little to be joyful about. Nevertheless, he created an anthem of joy that embraces beauty over suffering. For the final week of the Advent Film Festival, we will be discussing Following the Ninth. Here is the trailer. Everything will pass and the world will perish, but the Ninth Symphony will remain. It enters your bloodstream and then changes who you are. This is just unstoppable momentum, like a star whirling through space. Tiananmen Square, where it was played over the loudspeakers during the revolution. Which created an uh, ambiance of hope for us. To the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, where it was played when the wall fell down. I wish every person on this planet could experience this moment. It seems to express most completely what human beings are struggling for what's possible for mankind. Pinochet took the power and it began a very dark time. 
One day I heard the Ninth Symphony. It was us having the colorful butterfly in our heart. It was fantastic. It was uh, hope. That disaster tsunami reunited the Japanese people. What happened is just like Daiku, Daiku concept. People became brothers. We hope you will join us for our final Advent Film Festival discussion on Wednesday at 7 p.m. This film can be found on YouTube or on the Following the Ninth website. At the beginning of the film, you will hear from Billy Bragg, a British punk rocker who wrote alternate words to Ode to Joy, which soon became a popular song, even performed for the Queen. In this modern day Magnificat, Bragg sings, See now like a phoenix rising from the rubble of the war. Hope of ages manifested, peace and freedom evermore. Brothers, sisters, stand together, raise your voices as one. Though by history divided, reconciled in unison. Throw off now the chains of ancient bitterness and enmity, and in hand let's walk together on the path of liberty. Hark, a new dawn is breaking. Raise your voices now as one, though by history divided, reconciled in unison. What's to be then, all my brothers, sisters? What is in your hearts? Tell me now the hopes you harbor. What's the task and where to start? Though speak 10 million voices, every word is understood. Furnish every heart with joy and banish all hatred for good. The call of Christmas, of the angels to Mary and Elizabeth, to the shepherds in the fields, to kings in a faraway land, to faithful followers of Christ in the year 2020, is to dance with joy, not just in the springtime, but in the shadows of winter. May we all work to furnish every heart with a lasting, impenetrable sense of joy in Jesus Christ, the true joy of Christmas that signals all joy that follows and all joy that is to come. Amen. I invite you to get into a comfortable position of rest. I invite you to get as quiet and still as you can as we prepare for a time of prayer. The gentle pull of God is often lost amidst the rush of all the obligations which lay a claim on us. Yet just beyond the frantic pace our restless feet have trod lie deep still pools of quietness, the dwelling place of God. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, be the air I breathe. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, free me to receive. Oh, take me to that secret place where lost in wonder and in awe, the moment comes and I rejoice to be and be with God. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, be the air I breathe. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, free me to receive. God of power and glory, we remember your awesome deeds across the ages. The times you saved us and brought us home. Look upon us with your shining face, especially in times of need. We pray for those who look to you for healing and hope. Those who are sick or recuperating from illness and injury. 
those who are lonely and need companionship and care, those for whom the holidays bring sorrow or pain, those whose deep sadness overshadows joy. Let your face shine upon us, O God. We pray for people in need of restoration and reconciliation, for those battling addictions and those in recovery, for people estranged from those they love, for someone lost in grief, for someone far from home. Let your face shine upon us, O God, that we might be saved. Renew the spirit of a world grown weary with waiting and hoping. Especially we pray for wars to end, for hunger and poverty to be crowded out by abundance. We pray too for the church, because we grow weary in our waiting and watching. Grant us clarity, passion, and true fellowship that we are awake to your presence. Let your face shine upon the church and all this weary world, we pray. In the name of the one born in a manger and coming again on clouds of glory. Amen. We'd like to pause and invite you to support the mission and ministry of this church by giving financially. If you've already given online or sent in a check, we very much appreciate your generosity. If you haven't given yet, but would like to, you can do through, so through our website, www.anchoragepresbyterian.org. Let us now give the gifts of our life and labor to the Lord. As you will witness in our documentary this week, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which is the basis of the tune for our hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, has been a powerful witness to the human spirit to overcome adversity in many instances around the globe. British punk rock star Billy Bragg once wrote an alternative translation of the original German choral score for a school teacher to teach the children in her classroom, and it soon became a popular anthem, even being performed for the Queen. During the postlude today, you will see these words on the screen as I play the melody on the organ. In these words, you can hear the call to resist division, to raise our voices, to furnish every heart with joy and banish all hatred for good. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that God is ever-present with us, fill the night left by sadness with messages of joy. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep joy alive in you and that spur you on to your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Amen. <laughs> 